Okay, everything seems to be working. All right, and hello again. So uh, I've uh, recently picked up a uh, original Xbox um, from a thrift store for like 10 bucks. So I just tested it out. Everything seems fine except for the optical drive is being crazy. So I'm gonna take it apart um, and see if there's something that we can just uh, fix or if it's something I need, re need to replace. So I, yeah, let's get started. All right, so first remove the uh, feet. Use a little flat screwdriver. It might tear off some of the uh, glue. Um, try to keep it intact, but we can always apply some new glue. Um, kind of gross Xbox. It's a little bit dirty, a little greasy feeling, but the fact that it works is good enough for me. Um, well, aside from the CD-ROM drive or optical drive. All right. And it pretty much ripped off all the glue on most of those ones. Let's see what size. Um, that's the size right there. It's one of these uh, screwdrivers. I'm not sure if it's a, I think it's a, called a Torx. Come on, focus. Focus, focus, focus. Yeah, so kind of like a star shaped bit. Well, anyways, it's a Torx. I don't know the size. My drivers are not labeled, so I'm sure that's something we can put on the description, or you can simply just look up which torx bit is required to open an xbox original google knows everything so i'm sure it'll be able to tell you there's four of these i think there might be one under yeah there's one under there it's good that this hasn't been opened i'm kind of excited to see if it's one of the models that requires you to remove the uh, capacitor that leaks because uh, all of mine are a little too new so they uh, didn't require that mod. I need to turn off the autofocus because it sucks. And then we'll... Oh, it's still going. Oh, that's stabilization. No wonder. Okay, let's get this thing focused in. Uh, that looks pretty good, I guess. I don't know. I'm not good with cameras. Anyways, yeah, that autofocus was really starting to bother me. Maybe if we... Hold on. Sorry about this. Let me turn the autofocus back on and touch where I want it to focus at, right there, or yeah, let's see, okay, guess that's okay, uh, was it this one, okay, so there's that, I probably should have taken a razor blade and carved around that sticker just to make it like a nice clean hole, but whatever. Okay, apparently we didn't need any of those yet. Flip it back around and then it should just pop right off. Did I take them all out? Yes, I did. Oh, apparently there's another one down here. Jeez, it's been a minute since I've taken one of these apart, but so six uh, really long Torx screws. Now it should come off. There we 
go. Come on. All right, pretty clean in there. So then there's like a screw there, screw there, and a screw there that we need to take out. We're just gonna fully disassemble this um, for the hell of it. Disconnecting the IDE drive or IDE cable, I should say. See if that's the same bit. It is not, it's a little bit smaller. I do have one that's, no, nope, that's not quite small enough. Let me get my other screwdriver. At least now I'll be able to tell you what size it is. Let's see, is it that one? No, nope, too small. All right, that one works. It's a T9, so at least that one's a T9. That one down there is also a T9. I wish that was magnetic, but it's not. So let me see if I got uh, some tweezers. I don't want that falling down in there. And. Yeah, I need a new screwdriver set that is fully magnetic. I think that's it, just those three. And we should be able to lift uh, both of these out. Let me disconnect the CD-ROM power and the hard drive power. Come on. These are a little bit tight, kind of wiggling back and forth. Sometimes if you get a screwdriver on the edge of the little Molex connector, just be careful, do it only a little bit at a time, and then do the other side. Let's just keep wiggling it. There we go, it's coming, okay. And there's little hooks, just unroute those. Pull that off to the side. Okay, let's see if we can lift this out now. And we can. So there's the hard drive tray. Got a little bit of goobers on the bottom of it. I think these are like a maybe an 8 gigabyte. Um, doesn't say. I'd probably have to look up the model number. So... Anyways, the hard drive's out. Let's take that out, because that seems to be working fine. And then let's get the CD-ROM out. There we go, okay. So that's actually the piece I'm gonna be actually fully disassembling. Let's take a look. Yeah, this looks like a little bit older model. I think one of these is the uh, capacitor I need to remove. It actually kind of looks like maybe one's possibly started leaking already. So, uh, my other ones also don't have a fan on the GPU. It's all passively cooled. So, let's uh, get the rest of this taken apart. If I'm going to have to desolder that capacitor, I'm going to need to. All right, so there's that. There's that. I guess we can leave that. Let's see what size those are. Definitely too big. All right, let's get the motherboard out. Take out all the T9 screws. And one other good thing about video recording, the things that you do is you can see kind of where uh, all the screws went, so you can make sure you get it put it back together correctly. I've done this before, so I'm fairly familiar with the insides of an Xbox. Uh, my first Xbox, I'm, I have hard modded, so uh, makes it easy to soft mod and uh, add bigger hard drives to any future Xboxes I get, so that's nice. Probably uh, recommend staying away from any of the power supply stuff with your screwdriver and your fingers. Uh, you don't want to 
get a shock. I'm sure there's uh, capacitors in there that can hold a charge. So just be careful when you're dicking around with that part of it. Come on. Uh, apparently I didn't get it all the way unscrewed. There we go. What else do we got? Let's disconnect the power supply from the motherboard. There's that. Go ahead and disconnect the controller ports from this little daughter board here. And this connector, I believe, goes to the power and reset button. So there's that and that. Okay, do we have any more screws in here? Yeah, yes, I think we have to take out the ones on the sides of the display port. Or I should say video port since there's actually a thing called display port and that's not what this is. And this look maybe like they're a little longer, so maybe we want to keep them separate. Nope, they're the same. All right, so fan, I think we have to disconnect because that's connected to the case. If we missed a screw there, let's get that taken out. Okay, I think it's about ready. Wiggle it and see what we got here. Yeah, I think we're good to go. Just need to tip it up and pull it towards us so those ports come out of the back. Come on, get out of the way. There we go. Okay. So there's the motherboard. And yeah, so um, uh, like I said, I don't know exactly which one. It might be this big one here. Um, if you have that, you need to remove it. Um, I'll, I'll get the information on that. We'll do that at a later time. Uh, right now, I'm just doing the disassembly portion. Uh, and we'll take apart that CD-ROM drive, see, there, see if there's something obvious in there that um, is causing it to make the bizarre noise that it is. But uh, yeah, eventually these will start leaking and they'll d damage a bunch of traces and components and then you're pretty much fucked. So uh, yeah, there's that. Let's go ahead and set that off to the side. I guess we can leave the... No, I'm going to... Yeah, I guess I'm going to leave it. I don't need to really like scrub it. There's not goobers inside of it. So it's actually pretty clean on the inside. So I can just do some regular dusting on the outside. So we'll get that out of the way. Let's see what is required to take apart the CD-ROM. Because this is a part I've never done. So let's see. Feels a little loose pulling it forward and back like that. So it feels like there might be like a snap or something. Oh, okay. It looks like it lifts up over those poles. Oh, I see. There's little snaps inside here. There we go. And let's get this other side. There we go. And then pull it up off that pillar. All right, so there's that part taken apart. What else do we got? All I can see is these two screws in the back. I think we need to stick something down in there to eject it so we can get a little further. I thought I had a paper clip somewhere handy. Uh, hmm. Of course. I don't have one when I need one. Let me grab one real quick. While I knock everything in my office over. Let's get that fucking thing out of the way. Okay. Back to finding a paper clip. There we go. Alright, so... Um, the only reason I'm thinking this is because a lot of times these front, uh, little face plates, I 
that's usually the eject, I thought. But they slide up, and then you can... Huh. It's not seeming to work like I expect. Let's go ahead and take these two screws out and see what happens with those. Well, that was fucking good. Nice. Yeah, don't do it like I did. Hold it horizontally so that your screws don't fall down inside of it. And these are a little smaller than the rest, so keep those separate. Let's see what... That didn't really give us much. These look like they're little tabs that can... No, they just go straight through. They're not... They don't look like they're really holding anything on. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there's two screws right there. They are Phillips head. Let's get a Phillips bit. So yeah, it looks like there's two here. Um, and actually that's more where we need to be anyways. I'm gonna see if there's like a belt loose or something like that. Uh, we're a little stuck on. And let's see if we can get those out with a... Uh, I think maybe this is magnetic. Yes, okay. Alright, let's see if that comes off now. Yeah, so there's little two little tabs right there that I had to push into. Ugh, looks pretty fucking dirty in there. Some gunk. Okay, yeah, I need to get this ejected so that I can... Uh, yeah, that's pretty filthy in there. So let's see if maybe we need to straighten this out a little bit more. I know they're sometimes kind of hard to push in to force the eject, but this one's not seeming like it's doing anything. Let me see if I can shine a light down in there and see if that makes a difference. If I can see any. Yeah. At least I kind of know what it looks like down in there, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Oh, it did hit something. I thought it did. It looked like it. Hmm. Yeah, so that pushed down the uh, uh, drive assembly. I'm kind of getting it. I guess I have to push harder. Yeah. So I see it kind of sliding forward here and there, but it's just not not wanting to come out. Oh, there we go. Oh, look at that. Yeah, it was giving some sort of god-awful noise when I was booting it up last time. Huh. I'm not seeing anything obviously wrong with it. All these belts look good, and the gears look good. Let's see. Should pop back up. Yeah, it doesn't pop all the way back up. So whatever's causing that might be... this thing, this bit right here. Let's see if we can get this out. There's two little tabs on the side right here. It'll let us take the actual tray out. 
Okay, let's take a look at this mechanism. I just need to be greased. And it's a little rough right there in that area. I don't see any missing gears and they don't even look very worn or anything. So yeah, so that's gonna take a little digging to figure out what's going on there. Um, do not know how to get this plate off. Looks like we're going to kind of bend these out a little bit and maybe lift it up. No, we don't need to bend those out. It should just lift off. Yeah. too bad. I guess it's somewhat similar to a standard CD-ROM drive. All right, let's see. Yeah, there's something off right in that area. Let's see what's going on on the bottom when I do that. I'm wondering if I just gave it a good clean and re-greased it, if that would be all that it needs. Because, I mean, the, the mechanism itself seems to work. It just gets kind of weird right there. Hmm. Okay, well. Hmm. I don't know if I should... Just continue taking it apart, or if I should just try to clean it in place, because I almost don't see any. I wonder if it's the actual tray that's having the hard time, or if it's this geared arm. Yeah, it feels like it's just getting stuck over here on this side right here. Like it's a little off center. Yeah, I hate messing with gears. There's always something that can go wrong with them. But, all right, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to look into this drive and see if there's a common problem with it. And if there is, address that common problem. So, let's see, what brand is this uh, drive? This is the Thompson drive. I don't think I've ever heard of Thompson. Uh, motor interface. Yeah, so uh, Thompson o OKMCO Shenzhen Co. LTD. This is a TGM 600. Let's see if that'll focus. Of course not. Let's try to zoom in from there. Let's see if that works. Of course not. Focus, you piece of garbage. There we go. So yeah. So yeah, this mechanism right here. Uh, if I can get it to focus again. Yeah, bring it away a little bit. There we go. Okay. Um, yeah, right about here. Like It itself doesn't feel like it's rubbing anything. The gears feel smooth throughout. It's somewhere over here that kind of, you can even kind of hear it. It's just like a little bit 
tight or something. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do a little bit of research on this drive before I continue. See if there's some sort of common known problems before I just try to make up my own solution. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not an expert at this. I just uh, I have pretty good luck luck fixing things myself. Um, obviously, with help from the internet. Thank God for the fucking internet. Um, anyways, yeah, I'll be right back as soon as I figure out what I'm dealing with here. Okay, so. Uh, what we're going to do while we have the motherboard out is uh, remove the clock capacitor. Um, basically, it's a shitty capacitor and it eventually starts leaking. And actually, this one looks like it already started leaking a little bit. Let's see if I can get that on film. Here, let me actually just zoom in. Okay, so actually... This right here, this capacitor is the one that you're going to want to remove. Um, I verified that mine is a 1.0 Xbox. Um, you can tell by the uh, video chipset and the fact that it has a fan on the GPU. Um, but I believe it's like everything from the 1.0 to the 1.5 um, requires this. Well, it doesn't require it, but... Uh, this capacitor will be uh, a leaky son of a bitch. So we're going to go ahead and remove that. And uh, the way that we're going to do that is a pretty simple method. Um, I'm just going to put a little solder on my um, soldering iron and get some... Uh, let's see if we can get that zoomed in or focused at least. Yeah, there we go. So these two, um, I don't know what you want to call them, nubs out of the back of the capacitor, I'm going to heat up with a little extra solder and we're going to see if we can just wiggle it out. Um, I do have some solder braid, so if that doesn't work, we'll um, give it a try. So let's uh, see if we can... Focus in on that, uh, right there. Can't tell how good of a picture that is, but all right. So I'm gonna get a little um, solder on my tip here. It's basically gonna allow the heat to transfer a little bit better. I'm gonna grab the capacitor on the other side of the motherboard and I'm going to go ahead and start uh, heating that up and wiggling it back and forth. Oh, see, I almost got it all the way out already. Putting the solder on the end of your soldering tip is kind of like adding thermal compound to your CPU. It allows the heat to transfer between the tip and the legs of this capacitor far more efficiently. So and I'm almost done here. Just need to rock it back and forth a couple more times. make sure you're not touching any of the other components or pads. We don't want to do any more damage than we have to. So and what this capacitor does is it basically just keeps the time of your uh, internal clock. So um, until we soft mod it, basically every time we boot this bad boy up, it's going to ask us to set the time. So and I got one leg out and just waiting on the other one. And get a little bit more solder on my tip. Make it a little bit more 
One more contact. Come on, you. It might be a little too much solder. Let's heat what we got left on there. Come on. Just slowly wiggling it. Let's see if I can maybe put it on an angle like that. Maybe you can get a better look. It's a lot harder to do these kind of jobs with a camera involved because um, I can't stick my head in the way and can't get as close as I'd like. Come on, we're almost there. It's barely holding on. Got a lot of solder on there. I need to get removed. Here, I'm actually going to get some solder braid to get that wicked up. And this is the uh, solder braid I use. It's pretty freaking awesome. I've tried some other brands and this seems to work the best for me. So I definitely recommend it. Let's uh, get that sopped up there because we do have quite a bit. My soldering irons at 235 degrees, or sorry, 335 degrees. I'm not sure if that's uh, too much or too little, but that's right around where I keep it for most of the jobs I do. I am not an expert, and all of these are just for personal jobs. I don't have a uh, anybody paying me to do any soldering work, so there we go. So there you have it. There is the uh, clock capacitor now removed. If I can get that focused. There we go. So let's flip it around to the other side and make sure we grab the right one. Yep. So uh, let me uh, get that in the shot. And right about there. So right there is the where the capacitor used to be. And now it is no more. So um, what we're going to do now is uh, clean up that area. Let me get some uh, isopropyl alcohol and some paper towels. Stand by. I'm also going to grab a toothbrush and some Q-tips. Uh, definitely don't use the toothbrush that you're going to brush your teeth with because this shit doesn't taste good, that's for sure. So there's the alcohol, paper towel, toothbrush, and some Q-tips. Okay. Alright, so let's lay a paper towel underneath this so I don't make a mess on my nice new table here. I'm going to go ahead and dip my uh, toothbrush inside the um, rubbing alcohol. Actually, I need to remove the actual whole lid. Get a little on there. Nice and wetted. And we're going to go over that whole area where, uh, be careful not to knock around the other capacitors, but there was quite a bit of acid, I guess, um, from these, the leaky capacitor. Wasn't too bad. I don't see anything that looks damaged, but I want to be careful not to knock anything else off or whatever, but we want to get a nice scrub going on there. And my toothbrush won't fit in between there, so we're going to use some Q-tips. Let's uh, go ahead and wet one of those. There we go. And then I can get in between here, make sure I get everything nice and clean. I'm going to make sure to 
get it off of any other components that are around there. There's little resistors and transistors and capacitors around that you don't want to just be damaged over time because if you leave that acid on there, it'll just slowly eat it over time. And you could replace that with a nicer quality capacitor, preferably something from Japan. They seem to do a good job about um, making decent capacitors from what I hear. So if you wanted to replace it so you don't have to set your clock and keep it stock, um, you could do that. And uh, I just definitely recommend uh, getting that taken care of as soon as possible because, I mean, these things aren't going to last forever. And uh, they definitely won't if... Uh, don't take that capacitor out so yeah so we've almost got it just about done might as well clean some of the other board while i'm here let's get rid of some of this dust yeah, there's a little bit around but it's not too dirty considering it is a model one so this is the Model T of Xboxes. All right, so yeah, so there you have it. Um, I mean, obviously we still have to get that focused in. Um, I still have to, uh, you know, fix the optical drive. But I think what I'm going to do first is uh, get it all assembled again and uh, grease up that optical drive because I think it's just kind of sticking. Um, it sounded much better the first time I um, put in the disc, but the second time I put in, it made a kind of a weird grindy noise. So I'm wondering if it just wasn't able to lift the tray properly and then tried to spin the disc. So we'll go ahead and uh, grease it up, reassemble it, see if it works and go from there. All right, so another thing that I decided that we're gonna do with this Xbox is uh, change the thermal compound. So I'm gonna use this uh, MX4 and I'm gonna take off the heat sinks for the CPU and GPU, clean it off and reapply new. Um, Cause what I've found is, especially since this is a model one, um, I think, I don't even know when that came out. Um, but anyways, it's pretty old and sometimes that uh, thermal compound will crust up and become pretty gross and probably ineffective. So we're going to just go ahead and do that for the hell of it. So let's go ahead and take off this fan first. Maybe it's four Phillips screws, so it shouldn't be too big of a, an issue. that aside and then if we push the let's see how does this attach let's look at it for a minute because I've never taken one of these off okay so yeah it looks like if we just push it down and then towards us it should lift off of those but it's not All right, well, what we'll do is just push it down, grab a little flathead screwdriver and pop it out instead. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So there's that. Let's uh, remember the orientation. So the big end was towards the controller ports, towards the front. So we'll leave it that way. And it looks like... I don't know if they're all... Oh, this is one big aluminum thing, but let's go ahead and take off the CPU one. And I don't know how that goes either because I've never taken one of these off. Let's see. So if you look in there, you can kind of see that it's if I can get this fucking thing to focus, there we go. So it's like a little arm that's attached down in there with a little 
hook on the edge of the plastic there, so. Oh, well. Okay, apparently that's not one big. See, I thought it was all attached together, but it looks like there's a separation right there, so you can uh, flip that out. So obviously, just look at what you got and figure out how to do it based on how it works. Let's see, and I'm still not figuring it out. So it only goes back halfway. And then it looks like we can pull that out, but we can't. Not still underneath the lip of that. Maybe we can take this other end out. Flat screwdriver time again. I'm just gonna stick that under there and Give it a little bit of pressure. I don't want to break it, so yeah, a little bit of pressure will go a long way. There we go. All right, so the clasp goes that way towards the front again, so got that off. Let's see what the condition of the, eh, it's, looks like it's barely there. I don't know why they have all of this extra there, but we'll just put it on the die. And I don't know why this piece ain't coming out. Uh, I don't really want to break anything, but here, let me take this fan off so it ain't jiggling around there. I'll wiggle this for a minute and see if it loosens up. Oh, there it goes. All right, well, let's go ahead and move this out of the way and clean these off first and then we'll clean off the actual chips. So I'm gonna grab a razor blade to just scrape the bulk of this off. Let's put a paper towel down. Okay, I'm just gonna go ahead and scrape the bulk of this off because the alcohol we'll be putting on in a minute will take it off, but we don't want to work it that long. The more we can get off just initially, the easier it'll be. And I definitely don't want to scrape the metal as much as I am because that's just going to make it less flat. Pretty sure the machine will flatten it better than my razor blade is doing. Okay, that's pretty good for the most of it. Let's try to get this off now. Well, that's coming off in a nice sheet. That's much better. Let's turn it around and start from this side. Okay. All right, let's see what kind of effect rubbing alcohol has on it. Grab our old toothbrush there. Wet our bristles. It's having very little effect on this stuff. All right, let's try it on this. It's slightly coming off, I guess. Let's see. No. So, yeah, rubbing alcohol doesn't seem to even scratch that. So, let's try something else. Let's try some. I don't have any more than that can. Here we go. Uh, so, this stuff is pretty awesome. Goof off or goo gone. Put a little drop on each of these. Oops. And give that a little scrub. That should come right off. Yeah. It's definitely having a much better effect on this yellow shit. Okay. 
I may have to apply some more, but yeah, it's coming off pretty well. Oh, that came right off. All right, maybe the trick is to let it sit for a minute. All right, we'll probably use a little alcohol after just to clean up any residue of the goof off because I don't want that affecting the thermal compound and the uh, um, rubbing alcohol will evaporate. So yeah, this stuff works good for this yellow stuff. A little bit left on the corner. I think I'm gonna go at that with the razor blade again. And I'm probably fucking this heat sink up a little bit more than I should. That might just be oxida ox oxidization. Oxidization. I don't know how to say that, but uh, aluminum is shiny like this, but then it oxidizes from the oxygen in the air and uh, turns dull. So I don't think I'm, feels pretty smooth. I can't feel any of those scratches. I do feel a little bit of a nick right there in the middle, which is not good, but okay. So heat sinks are good enough. Let's do the uh, CPUs. or the dies anyways on here. Let's do this. Uh, get that pink shit off if we can. Use my fingernail. I don't want to use any tools on there because if you crack that die, you're game over. All right, so. That actually looks okay. Mm, it's kind of dull. It should be shiny. Let's get some rubbing alcohol on there and keep working at it. Actually, I'm going to get some goo gun on there. Now, I'm not saying this is the right way to do it. That's for damn sure. I am just a shithead tinkering with my stuff. This is how I do things. I am willing to risk it breaking things. So if this breaks this Xbox, I don't really care. I mean, I don't want it to, obviously. But if it breaks, whatever. But if it breaks yours, that's on you. Because you followed some shithead on the internet. I mean, if the, if we watch this video and by the end it, everything works good, then you'll know that this process is fine probably, but I am not an expert. I have no expertise in this type of stuff. There we go. That's perfect. All right, let's see if we can get this yellow stuff off. But yeah, copy my methods at your own risk. I wonder why they use different thermal compounds on each of these dyes. I don't know if that makes any kind of sense to me. Let's get a little bit more goo gun on there. Ooh, got a little bit much. Oh, it's working, so I guess that's good. Get all that greasy shit up, because goo gun's a little bit oily. I'm not sure if it's conductive or not. Probably be a good thing to find out. All right, let's use a little bit of rubbing alcohol on both the heat sinks and on the CPUs to get rid of any residue from the goo gun. 
Because like I said, I don't know how that'll affect the uh, thermal compound. We don't want it breaking it down or something. So we don't want to have to do this again. Okay, so there's the CPU heat sink and the GPU heat sink. All cleaned with alcohol. And the reason why we do this, obviously, is to get rid of the residue, but also uh, rubbing alcohol evaporates quickly, so it shouldn't leave anything on there. All right, let's uh, let's clean up our mess a little bit. I've got a little bit of a mess going on here. Close up the goo gun. Get this shit out of the way. All right, nice and clean surface to work with. And let's uh, let's put some thermal compound on there. So the part that gets hot is the center. I mean, obviously it's going to radiate heat out, but you want to make sure that you get the thermal compound on the actual die itself. You don't want to put it on uh, the actual surface of the uh, CPU. Um, same with this. The center is going to be where it gets hot. Um, use a very small amount of this stuff. A little bit goes a long way. And uh, if I can open it, geez, there we go. Um, when you put on this, the heat sink, it's going to smash out. So a little teeny tiny bit can be flattened out pretty, pretty decently. So you want to just use a little, oh, that's probably way too much. I like to smear it around just so it can flatten out. This one, actually, this black surface kind of has a lip on it a little bit. You can kind of fill it. So I'm wondering if that whole little basin is going to need to be filled in. It's, I mean, we still don't want to use that much. It looks like a lot, but it's pretty thin. So let's... Uh, be done with our thermal compound so we don't accidentally put any more on there because there's already quite a bit. All right, so we're going to put the CPU heat sink on. I wish I would have looked at which orientation, but it looks the same either way. So we're going to go ahead and plop that on there. Let's smush it down and then I'll take it off and you can see how well it smashes out. It's probably leaking over the edge of the die. Yeah, so. Let me actually take off some of this excess off of here because there was quite a bit. All right, so that should be plenty. And then the graphics. Um, let's see how well that smashed out. Looks good. Let's actually put it that way, smeared around. Make sure it covers all that metal in the center. All right, let's go ahead and get this thing put back on. We're gonna put those little legs under there. Open that up. Huh. It's not going over. Maybe we have to just, there we go. You have to put it down in between them before you start latching any sides. There we go. And there we go. Simple as that. All right, CPU is done. Let's get the GPU one on. Oops. Let's attach the back end of it first. If we can get it into the, there we go. There we go. All right. Way more easy to put on than take off. Let's go ahead and get the uh, fan plugged back in. There we go. Make sure that the holes are lined up with where it was screwed in before. That'll just make it easier in the, to get it back on. And uh, kind of a tip, if you back out your screw, it'll click, letting you know that the it's at the beginning of the threads. So every time you start, turn it towards the left until it kind of pops into place 
and then you know you're good to where you're not going to cross thread anything. There we go. Clicked. There we go. There we go. Yeah, cross threading is one of the biggest bitches to deal with. There we go. And I think I cross threaded that one. Speak of the devil. There we go. I'll kind of strip that out. All right, well, nobody's perfect. All right. Um, yeah, so. We've replaced the thermal compound um, just as a good measure while we have this thing opened. Um, I used an air duster to kind of spray out the, you know, heat sink so they can get the maximum cooling. Clean out the cooler. And we'll probably uh, spray out the power supply too when we get everything put back together. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, start reassembling now. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, now that we've put new thermal compound on the motherboard and removed the clock capacitor, let's go ahead and uh, reassemble um, or at least put the uh, motherboard back in. I still have to work on the optical drive, but first thing that we're going to do, blow out any of the dust with a air in the can. Holy shit. <coughs> <coughs> that was way dustier than it looked. Okay. Well, now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and uh, put this thing back in. So you want to put it in uh, ports first and then kind of lay it down um, because they stick out a little bit farther than the motherboard if you can see there maybe by a quarter inch or so, so let's go ahead and stick those back in and uh, there's some tabs on the sides of uh, the network port make sure those don't go into the network port make sure that they're on the outside because that'll definitely cause you a short so let's go ahead and stick those back in there all right, we'll make sure that the cables are out of the way so we can put this back in. There we go. And it's flat, so let's go ahead and start um, screwing in some of these screws. We've got quite a bit of them, so let's start over here. And since we're doing a soft mod, we don't really need to have the motherboard out. So, um, cause we'll be doing that all through software, hence the name soft mod. Um, if you were hard modding, had like an actual mod chip, then you'd definitely want to leave this out. Cause I think some of the wiring needs to be routed to the bottom. It's, I don't think it's possible to do it with the motherboard in. So we are nearly there. Same trick applies. If you need to get the threads lined up, just back it out until you hear a little click like that. And then it will go right in, same threads. This is especially important on plastic because it uh, will make them too loose to hold your motherboard in if you strip those out, so. Well, it looks like we've got three more or so. Three more after this one anyways. The 
last two are on the uh, video um, port. I really need to get a magnetic tip for this because it's a pain in the ass to try to get these screws on sometimes. Let's see, like that. Let's go ahead and drop it in with the tweezers. If we can hold on to it properly. Nope, that isn't going to work. Let's try doing it like this. Nope. I'm going to plug this so I have a little bit more room. That way I can do it. Maybe. Come on, go in your hole, you little fucker. There we go. Right, so let's go ahead and plug in the GPU fan again. Plug in the case fan. And plug in the player one, player two ports. Is that the way it goes? Yes. Player one, player two, player three, and player four. There we go. Make sure that the daughter board is still plugged in. It feels a little loose, but that's fine. And we'll plug in the power and reset buttons. And then finally, we'll plug in the power supply and, and make sure we get that lined up properly there we go all right so now all we have left is to I'm like I said I'm gonna just grease up that optical drive and see if it uh, helps with my issue um, if it doesn't, we'll take it further apart, and then uh, if we still can't fix it, I'll just uh, get a replacement on eBay. I'm sure there's something fairly cheap, so let's uh, do that next. All right, so uh, what we're going to do now is just uh, grease up this uh, optical drive in any way that we can see that anything requires greasing. So. I am going to use white lithium grease. Um, I was going to use bike grease because that's the only other grease I have, but I think this is probably a better um, option. I'm not sure exactly what they use on these um, optical drives to grease them up, but I do know that lithium grease is pretty greasy. So I'm just going to spray some in this paper towel here. And then I'm going to use a Q-tip to sop some of that up. The first thing that we're going to grease is the... Whoa, almost dropped that. Is the uh, holes. Let me see if I can get this thing to focus in. Looks pretty good. Okay, so these rails where the CD-ROM laser goes across we're gonna put a little bit on there everywhere we can and we'll try to do the bottoms of them as well okay the next place i think i'm going to grease is inside these little channels right here which is where the 
tray uses it basically forces the tray up and down so seems like a good place to get a little grease at okay then maybe let's see where else can we put some grease let's I wish I knew where that squeaking was coming from. I've looked, um, looks like it's, this PCB is kind of rubbing on this. Oh no, I guess not, because that's not the part that moves. See, it's stuck right there. Hmm. Maybe this isn't going to work out as... Whoops. Whoops a daisy. Let me get that light back on here. There we go. Alright. So yeah, maybe... Maybe I'm not looking in the right spot. I don't see any issue with the gears. Spinning it from this gear. Maybe the motor is slipping. It doesn't look like it is. It seems pretty smooth until it gets to about right there. Let's see. Yeah, right about right in that region it gets tough right about there I still don't know what the hell's happening huh Turn the motor, it definitely works until it gets to right there. It's like some sort of oops. Hmm. Yeah, let's go ahead and reassemble it. I'll Put a little bit more grease in those channels. Let's see if uh, it made any kind of difference at all. Maybe just forcing it up and down a few times cleared out whatever's causing the issue. Let's uh, see if we can remember how to reassemble this fucking thing. Okay. So let's get the uh, tray back in. Let's see, it goes under those little edges there, maybe. Hmm, let's put it down. Yeah, it needs to be down when you put the tray back in. Where is that paper? There it is. Hmm. I'm not having any luck making it go up and down now.
Mm -hmm. Looks like it. It doesn't pop up all the way. We'll try it and see what happens. Okay. This piece, which had two little screws in it. Guess that won't do that go that way. Seems like a mighty tight fit now. I don't know if that's the right way. Yeah, that's gonna line up with the top of the disc motor. So, this has to be how it goes. That sounded wonderful. All right, let's put this side back on. All right, let's get our little Phillips head. And uh, these little flat screws right here. Of course, they're not magnetic. God damn it, that's going to be a bitch. Hmm, let me get my other screwdriver that is magnetic and see if I can set them down in the holes. Wait, this thing's magnetic, I think. Yes, it is. Okay. So we'll try to... Oh, well, that's going to be a pain. Now, once I get it down in there, how do I pull it back out? See if I can. There we go. Okay. Wait a minute. Does this need to go under there? I think it just sat on the outside, I guess. Maybe. God, I should have paid more attention to where this went. Yeah. Um, let's see if we can... Oh, fuck it. We don't need to deal with that right this second. Let's get this other screw in. screws that go in the back. Be careful not to drop them down in there. Okay, so there's that pretty much done. Hoping that this uh, just sits on the outside. Yeah, it looks like it does. There's some marks from where it was before. So, yeah, I guess that's about how it goes. Let's get it in this tray. Let's see, does it go like this? Okay, so 
Let me go find a power cord and then we will test it out and see if we're getting the same response I was getting before. Okay, so let's go ahead and get the uh, drives back in. Um, you do have to put the uh, CD-ROM drive in first, so let's see how this goes. Uh, okay, so we got to put in the cable, the IDE cable, and the power cable, I think, probably went that way. Let's see, no. That side went in first, it looks like. There we go. All right, so yeah, so the optical drive goes in first. Let's uh, plug the cable into it. And the power. Let's check it. Looks like it goes that way. Okay, and then we're going to lay it in where it goes. We're not going to fully reassemble yet because we're just testing. Make sure none of the cables are getting smashed. There we go. Alright, let's get the hard drive in. I'll make sure that the power cable is in routing channel right there so that it'll fit in nicely. There we go. Plug in the IDE cable first. Okay, let me find a CD, even though it's not a Xbox CD. Just need something in there to see if it spins up and something I don't really care about. How about some Sound Blaster Live drivers? That should work. All right, let's get the uh, power cable. Plug that in. All right, let's see if this works. I am getting an error code. Yeah. It does sound like it's reading it. I'm trying to anyways. Yeah, my uh, light's going from green to amber. I must have done something wrong. Oh, that's no video cable, I believe. Um, yeah, let's try the disc one more time and ignore that for now. Well, it is making a slight noise. Let me actually put my microphone down by it. We'll open it up and close it again. Oh, there we go. One more time. It's just a little bit grindy. I mean, obviously it's not going to read this disc, so it's probably going to just keep spinning and spinning, but... All right. Well, I guess it's going to be more 
dicking around with that optical drive. Something's spinning up. Let's listen to that again. Yeah, CD-ROM drive's trying to read, I'm trying to spin up a disc, but there's no disc in there. Let's try it one more time. Damn, that's definitely not good. I wonder if it's scratching up the surface of the disc. Let's find out. No, I don't see any grooves. Yeah, let's I'm gonna push down on the middle of it and see if that Yeah, that kind of sounds like the, when the tray lifts up, that motor's supposed to go up into this little um, circular part on this top piece of metal to kind of clamp the disc in place so that it's stable. It sounds like it's just barely, barely getting it. So I, th I think, yeah, that tray is not coming all the way up like it's supposed to. So at least that's my guess. I guess we'll keep working at it. All right, well, I'm gonna see what I can figure out uh, and then we'll pick it up where I left off. Okay, so I got online to see um, what I could find out about this drive and apparently this is the shittiest drive you can get in an Xbox. It's the uh, Thompson TGM 600. So, um, I also looked for replacements because I was thinking, well, since it's the shittiest, I might as well get a better one, but they are uh, three or four times more expensive than the fucking Xbox I bought. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and just take this completely apart um, and try to put it back together better than it was. And hopefully that'll um, do something for me. So you can just slide these up. Let's see. Oh, okay. Gonna kind of have to pull them out and over. Probably didn't need to even take that off, but whatever. All right, let's get the uh, little Phillips heads out of here. So, hopefully, this all works out in the end. Okay, so there's that piece. Let's take this out of the little shell here. I've got the rear screws to take out. These two right here. Here. Okay. So if this doesn't work, I'll probably uh, have to put this on hold until I find another cheap Xbox at a thrift shop and uh, use its drive, I guess. Or a conglomeration of all the parts from whatever to make the best xbox i can with the pieces i have i'm actually kind of glad on this one that i got a version 1.0 because i have not ever seen one and apparently there's a lot of cool things about it as far as uh t-sop flashing it so when we go to flash it we have uh, more space on the flash memory than some of the newer models Okay, come on. How did we do this before? Oh, 
There we go. Do it right. That's all you need to do. Okay. So let's see. Let's go ahead and take the tray off again. And let's see. Guess we'll take off the uh, little PCB on the back. Oh, this is one of those ones where you push forward. Be very careful with ribbon cables. They are um, easy to break. Let's see. I guess we have to take out that screw to get any further. It was definitely not the right bit, but that is fine. There we go. So that's out. Does that completely come out or what? I don't know. Let's keep taking screws out and see what we get. Yeah, I guess the problem with these drives is they have a hard time uh, reading certain burnt discs. So you have to make sure you burn them at the slowest speed. I'm going to use a different screwdriver for that. Um, yeah, the right brand of discs matters. The speed that you burn them at. Maybe I should watch what I'm doing instead of the LCD on the camera. Okay, so there's those two. That one went to the top. These are on the back. I should start trying to make sure I put my screws where they go so I can make sure I put this together the right way again. Okay, I mean... The electronics seem like they're fine, so we don't need to really mess with any of that. But uh, I want to definitely get the uh, mechanical bits as uh, smooth as I possibly can. Okay, so there's the uh, main controller board. Okay, it looks like... There's two screws to hold on the motor, but I can't get to one of them with the uh, uh, gear in the way, so we'll have to wait on that. Okay, so I am not sure what's holding that in. Oh, okay. Let's see if we can get this gear out. So just pull off. Okay, looks like there's a little retaining clip on it. It's a small flat screwdriver. Let's see, that one's pretty tiny. Uh, there are two clips on the side that might do it. It looks like these are two gears sandwiched together. So I'm betting that the uh, clips on the side of this thing are probably to hold those two together. I had a hard time getting this retention clip. Let's see if I can show what I'm actually talking about. So maybe there we go. Yeah. So there's like a little plastic ring on the top of this that I think is holding the whole assembly on. And then there's these little, um, I don't know, clasps right here that are uh, holding the two gears together because it looks like there's actually 
two gears right there. So they're the same size. I think it's just to make it thicker so that it for sure grips this. Uh, so I'm probably fucking up taking everything apart, but whatever. We'll get it all apart and uh, see if we can put it back together better than it was before. Let me get a flat screwdriver under this and try to pop it off. There we go. Come on. Hope it doesn't go flinging across my room. That could be a pain to find since it is transparent. I cannot get that off. Maybe I can just desolder that, but you no, know, let's let's work on the other piece first. Let's get this other board out. I think I gotta take these two screws off for the motor. Let's get this belt off. Okay. Let me actually zoom back out so that you can see what I'm talking about since I was not zoomed out. All right, so I just basically took the belt off of this to this. And hopefully by taking these two screws out, I can drop the motor out of the bottom. And then I should be able to get the uh, that other board out. Okay, yeah, there it is. Okay, so that's out. Now let's see what else we got going here. Yeah, I definitely have to get this gear off if I want to pull that other motor off. So let's see if this gear comes off. Uh, not easily, that's for sure. Okay, well, stick that under there and try to. Yeah, you probably shouldn't be following this as an instruction because I am more than likely going to damage this drive. Um, and that's why I'm being so kind of forceful with everything. Let's see if I can get this into there. Hmm. This piece of plastic's kind of working like a little C clip, if that's what they're called. Ah, uh, didn't do anything. It's like a little spl split in it, where it looks like it can come apart, but it's not. Totally damaging it, but whatever. All right, let's see if uh, maybe I can pull it off with some little pliers or something. Okay. There we go. Apparently that's the correct answer. Let's see if it slides off now. Yes. Okay. So as you can see here, there's two gears. Oh, interesting. So there's like a separate bottom gear and a... Yeah, well, leave those together. That seems important. Now we should be able to take off this other motor. Looks like they had some sort of glue on there, but it didn't really hold anything. Probably some sort of Loctite or something like that. 
Okay, so there's one. And two. And it looks like we do need to take this gear off. Oh, son of a bitch. There it goes. Luckily, I saw where it fell. Okay. So now that motor came out of the bottom. I should be able to finagle it up through here, I think. Maybe. And that's all as far as it'll go. Huh. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to be able to get it through like that. Maybe we have to take out these rear screws here. Yeah, let's change our bit. That one's not big enough for these Phillips. Let's try this one. Yeah, it works a little better, but not quite perfect. Okay, let's see if we can, there we go. All right, so now the main logic board is disconnected. So take that away and focus on the mechanical bits. Let's see what we got here. Well, we don't want to touch the laser. It does look pretty fucking dirty. I might've already touched it. Okay, so. Hmm. Probably should have taken better care to look where this was located on that gear, but whatever. That's fine. Okay, so we've got this loosened so that can come up like that. Let's take these other um, front screws out. Okay, so that's out, that's out. And now that whole assembly can come out. Okay, well, there's the uh, laser sled and motor assembly. Now let's take a look at this, see if it, yeah, it catches right there. Something's fucked. Trying to see if I see any worn plastic or anything that's broken in there. Yeah, see, it catches right there. I think that's preventing the drive from coming all the way back up. So, let's see if we see any teeth or anything that would indicate let's go ahead and take some of these gears out if we can if they just slide off okay i guess we'll take this other screw out for this pulley here Let me change back to my other screwdriver bit might need something even smaller than that no i just need to stick it in the hole that's what she said okay so like I said, this isn't a tutorial. I'm just uh, impatient and cheap. And so I wanna see if I can fix this myself. I was unfortunately not able to find a like schematic of how this was put together. So I'm definitely gonna have to pay attention to what I'm doing. 
Okay, so it looks like this gear, you can push that in. So that's probably how you release it. Yep, there we go. So there's that. I wonder how you get this off of there. Yeah, it seems like it's catching somewhere on this this actual piece that goes up and down. So let's uh, see if we can get this gear out. It also has a little tab. You know, it's a little slippery because it's greased up. Well, I got it to go up a little bit, but I don't know how I'm going to get it out if this is still there. Let's see, these look like they might be able to pull out. Yes. And yes. Okay, so now I can pull that off. They don't look worn or nothing. There was a little bit of goop on there, but uh, I don't know. Oh, there's a little foam pad. There's the other one. It's a little rubber O-ring of some kind that goes on these little ends right there to, I guess, prevent plastic on plastic rubbing so yeah that looks good let's see if this yeah it runs smoothly now so it's not that gear it's gonna be something with yeah that's pretty perfectly smooth now so what I'm going to do is get some more lithium grease. And I'm going to start reassembling everything except for that tray. <sighs> this is a pain in the ass that didn't need to be, but it is what it is, I guess. Okay, so... Wait, lithium grease again. I'm gonna spray it on this paper towel here. Get a big glob going. So, just sprayed it there and then I can use the Q-tip to start filling in the, uh, everything I need. Let's see if I can, you know, we need to put on this spindle right here for the top gear. I need it to go, to, I wonder if I can get this thing off. Because that might be helpful. Let's see. Because hmm. I want to get this other gear off so I can grease it too, just to be thorough. I just have no idea how this would even... It looks like it can kind of... That's probably not the right way. There's less surface area from this side, so we'll try to... Try that. Oops, see? Look what I did. Oh, I'm gonna need some glue for that. <laughs> it's definitely not gonna work now. Fuck. Alright, well. Hopefully, some glue can fix that. I really wish 
that had some obvious way to take it off. Oh, well, there we go. All right, well, it looks like we're gonna have to be super gluing some shit now. I'm gonna have to rough it up too to make sure that there's no grease on it because it was pretty greasy as well. Let's get this one off and grease down in there. There we go. Okay, so put it down in this hole right there like that. And then we'll put it back on. Okay. And then we'll do the same with this one. I am not sure if it went like this. I think it did. Let's see if that, yeah, okay. There's that. There's the uh, little pulley. I'm gonna have to do it on the pillar since I can't get a Q-tip down inside of it. Okay. So that works well. Let's go ahead and put, I think it was this long screw. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Make sure not to tighten it too tight to where it's interfering with spinning action. Feels good. Okay. Fuck, I'm pissed about this piece. Wish I would have not done that, but. Eh, well, whatever. Okay. So now let's uh, actually stick this motor back in there. And go like that. Yeah. Okay, so. Clip that back in if I can. Oh, I think I have to put that side in first because there's kind of a little hook right there. There we go. That seems about right. Let's go ahead and put some screws back in there. Need two screws, these little ones right here. There's one, and there's two. Oops. it's up tight okay so there's that now we need to get a little bit of lithium grease down in here this is kind of where the little white thing kind of slides down in there it looks like there was some oil along this definitely in there Definitely in there. All right. Put the uh, belt back on. this belt it was all crooked and we'll put it around the big one first and then there we go oh, now it's even more twisted come on let's see I 
Feels good. Okay, let's see if we can glue. Do I have any super glue? I better. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Okay. Let's get some goo gone that cuts through the grease. Let's see. Maybe we should glue it after it's on. All right, my video stopped for some reason, but you didn't miss anything. I was just about to uh, try to fix this piece that I broke. I need to get some of the oil off of it. Let's use some goo gun. I think you could probably use WD-40 too, but uh, I don't have any of that laying around right now, so which is weird. It's a pretty common household product. Let's go ahead and clean off that side too. All right. So that will hopefully break through the oil. Now I want to take some isopropyl alcohol and clean off the goo gun. Hopefully that'll be a clean enough surface where I can scuff it up with a uh, file and uh, glue it on with some sort of rigid rigidity. Rigidity. All right, so there's that and that. Let's give this a little bit of a scuff up in the... Uh, I don't want to file away much of the material. I just want to kind of create a little bit more surface area to be able to connect the glue to. And one thing I did find out is how to get this um, this white piece back in place. There actually is a little area where it's supposed to connect to. Wish I would have known that before I broke it. Okay. Pull off any of that. Let's get a paper towel and wipe it just to make sure there's nothing there. And I need to get the right light so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. All right, this might be hard to see in the camera, especially since my fucking focus never works. And I just glued my finger to it. Okay, well. well it's on and it seems to be in the right spot. So go ahead and let that dry. Oh man, okay. Well, if it doesn't work now, we know who to blame. God, that's who. Just kidding, me, AKA God. All right, so, whew. yeah, so if you look right here, let me see if I can get that to show up in the light. Yeah, if you see right, um, right here, there's a little divot that's where the piece that I just glued on goes and then there's two more little divots where the other two um, 
rail clip things go. So yeah, there's definitely a place where it's supposed to go. I wish I would have looked harder, but I didn't. So I wonder how long I've got to let this dry. Let's see. We need to wait. Um, Ten to forty-five seconds. I don't have that long. All right. See if the uh, focus will ever fucking work. Uh, anybody in the comments want to tell me how I can? I've got a Canon Rebel T5i. Um, if you've got any uh, suggestions on how to keep it focused on one level without manually focusing it or have it not be so stupid, let me know. Because I have servo autofocus on. I've got the switch on. Let's see what options I've got in here. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. So, whatever. It is what it is. Okay. So that's been about 45 seconds. It feels a little wet still. Get the hair out of it. Okay. Let's see if we can put this on without re-breaking that. Okay, so... Should just need to lay this in there. Maybe put that How do I get it far enough over to go up in there? God, maybe I should have put this together and then glued it. I had it on just a minute ago uh, after I found, oh, I do know one thing I have to do. I have to take this gear off. That did make it a lot easier to get it on and off. There we go. Okay, now let's see if it goes on. not but I'm sure there's a way to do it I need to put this side on first and then push it up Oh, there we go. There. Very nice. Okay. So now let's put this gear back on. And I noticed that there's a little switch in there. If it will fucking focus. So when you move it over to the side, you can see that it pushes that little triangular bit, I guess, to say that it's all the way over. And then when you go back this way, that long bit I just glued on, oops, hits it. I don't know if, it doesn't seem to make sense to me as far as it would have to be at least on one tooth of this gear to be able to, I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. So let's just ignore me. Okay, so let's uh, put more of this together. Let's go ahead and get, let's see, this thing goes in like this. And moving now. Did it glue into place? No. Oh, I had my finger on the fucking motor. Okay. Let's get this 
bit in there. There we go. Let's put a little O-rings on. These things. There's one. Where did the other one go? I just saw it. I swear I saw it. Didn't get stuck to the bottom there. Well, that is bizarre. I swore I just fucking saw it somewhere. Hmm. Okay. Now I'm getting annoyed. Did I grab both of them or something? No, there's just one on there. Did it stick to the bottom of something? Okay, unless that's the one that was on. Yep, okay. So apparently I didn't find it. It was the same one. Uh. Oh, okay. Cool. Somehow it got into here. All right, now let's try this again. Okay, so one goes on here, and the other goes on over here. And we will push that one in there, and that one in there. Okay, let's see what we got here now. It still catches right there. Yeah, right there is where it catches. Fuck it. Let's just put it back together and see what happens. It's probably the exact same thing as it was doing before, but whatever. We'll figure that out when we get to it. Okay, let's see. What's next? I guess we need to figure out how to get this bad boy back in. So... One side was on there and one side was on there and I need to put the uh, motor through first so we'll put this on this side and grab the motor if I can it goes this way Hook this up through here. Okay. Let's see, what should I do? Should I put the, yeah, I'm gonna put the motor screws in. Wait, something's, something's fucked here. Oh, I have it the opposite way. So, let's go through there. That goes like that. And then, we will put these two screws in. Just to kind of hold it. Come 
on, fingers, do my bidding. Let's put a bigger Phillips head bit in there. See if I can get a little bit better contact on these screws. That's better. Not perfect, but better. Okay, let's see if this works now. Okay, let me put these screws back in. There we go, there's one kind of. Okay, and the other one, okay, motor's in, Let's put this ribbon cable back in because there's no reason to have it out, is that in right, looks like it, okay, and then this in there. Come on. Okay. Leave that right there. Put the goes like goes like this but this needs to go like this okay let's see if we can get this little retainer clip back on There we go. Okay. So this, I believe, goes right there. But we'll also need to put on that little plastic doodad. There we go. Nice and secure and not quite right. Here we go. So that's supposed to go through here. Okay, and this, hmm. it goes right there, okay, <sighs> that's one of these screws. Okay, and then the 
these two go in here. That's totally not going to work, but I've definitely learned some things, I guess. That's half the battle. I know more than when I started. Like, for example, I need to get a new screwdriver set. I want one of those iFixit kits. Those look pretty badass. Hopefully they're magnetic. I don't know that they're not, but I'd assume that they are. My little kit's some cheap Chinese knockoff of that. Okay, so there's that. This goes on like this. And we need to get this out. That goes in there. Well, I guess that's secure. It doesn't allow me to push it in any further, so. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Let's screw these on. I can't wait to hear what kind of noises it makes now. Okay, ribbon cable for the optical dry laser. There we go, that seems secure. Pop it in. Let's get a little rubbing alcohol on the laser because it was very fucking dirty, probably from me touching it. And I'm not sure that this is the right way about going about cleaning it, but this is the only way I know. So very, very gently. I am not good at keeping things in the frame, but that looks pretty fucking good. So. All right, let's clean this off. It's a little dirty. And then we got that little magnet on there. That actually, I kind of feel that that was the noise that it's making is when it's not contacting this bit right here. I don't know if it's, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but. Okay, now let's put this on, I guess. Oh, wait, what the fuck am I thinking? Let me test the tray. So it needs to be all the way that way, I think. Where's my paper clip? Okay. We got something with this tray. As far as uh, it's just not put in 
exactly right to where it catches the uh so yeah so those these pegs right here right along these rails in here to guide it as well so let's uh make sure that we get those as well let's see I'll sit it right there see if that go in the slots okay that seems to be in the right yeah see it just never pushes it up all the way tray if anything looks broken okay and it follows that down pushes it that way I don't see how could that could be fucked up there are two bits but let's see when it's all the way in one will be all the way over here when it's up. I'm going to try to force it in with it all the way up. And that's not going to be possible because it'll just spin that gear. Hmm. Okay, so mechanically, I don't think it does push this all the way up. I think that the motor's supposed to run for a little longer until that little triangular switch in there gets triggered. Because there's no way, mechanically, there's just not enough distance in this to push that all the way up. So it would have to rely on that motor. It is what it is. Okay. I don't know what I'm talking about. Let's get this thing put back together. Okay. Well, hopefully the screw holds it on. Okay. Bottom plate, bottom plate, there it is. Okay. Let me take this off again, this top piece.
Okay, whatever. All right, let's get the screws put back in. Okay, I was gonna say, I thought this was magnetic yesterday. figure out why my fucking video keeps stopping. It stopped automatically is what it said. Uh, fucking fancy cameras. More trouble than they're worth. Okay, let's uh, pop out the drive tray a little bit. Put this thing back on. shit out of the way and then we'll do a power on test. thing that it goes in. in. Plug this in. Let's see if we can set it in the case. There we go. Fucker some power and throw a CD in it and see what it sounds like. Same as before. Great.
So you have pushing on the center where that little magnetic guide is, if it makes any difference. Yeah, it makes it louder. Cool. All right, well, I think I'm going to have to take a break on this uh, here Xbox until I get a new optical drive. Uh, I did what I could, which wasn't much, but uh, I didn't see any damage other than the damage that I made to it. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I guess it is what it is. And uh, hopefully I can get me a Samsung drive and not have to deal with that problem anymore. All right, well, thanks for watching.